can inflict a pack of this. <laughs> Halloween extravaganza number three. I'm Vox. I'm Natasha. I think we've hit a point where we got to figure out like our final lineup here. Right, because we're kind of at a point where we're getting to movies that we don't. We either have to wait. We're waiting for Luke. Yeah. To watch them. Yeah. Or we're like holding off because the movies are so long. Yeah, because I can't sit and watch <laughs> two and a half hour long movies. I know because we repetitively. we had an original movie in mind and I picked it just as like a I saw it as like a classic horror movie. I'd never seen it. Fox didn't want to watch it. And was like, oh. It's not that I didn't want to watch it. It's just I've seen it twice. Yeah. So he just was very not having it. I was like, that was my pick. And he was like, yeah. So I'm like, let's just go through like movies on HBO Max, Paramount Plus. And we found a movie. We landed on Peacock. Yeah. Oh, on Peacock. Okay. Yeah. This was in Paramount. This was Peacock. Okay. So. <laughs> Which is fine. Fox didn't want to watch a movie any longer than like an hour 45. Yeah. Like 90 minutes is really good for me right now. <laughs> I mean, it's different with Luke because we can come down and like talk about extensive, you know, uh, like pretty much as we hear you glurping. Um, we, we can talk about like the Sorry. story analytics, the background history and all that stuff. When it's just you and I, it's just kind of like, well, this is what happened and we liked it or we hated it, you know? Well, we kind of touch on that if we have enough to say. Yeah, it depends on what we're watching and, and yeah. you know, what we're doing. But we were scrolling through Peacock. And this one stuck out to me. That's why I clicked on it because there is a mask. I like the cover a On lot. the cover or like the poster, whatever you want to call it. And it looks exactly like Leatherface from, um, I want to say Texas Chainsaw 2 or 3. Um, and I, I want to know if it's like the same year. You know what I mean? If it's like out in the same year. Oh, it's not 2. It's got to be 3. The one where he's wearing uh, like lipstick and shit. Anyways. It just looks identical. And I was like, oh boy, this looks like a Texas Chainsaw yeah. Massacre ripoff. And guess what? It fucking was. Uh, to the extent. Is it a ripoff, though? When did Texas Chainsaw come out? Because this came out in 1979. Did oh, we really? say what the name of the movie is yet? We haven't, but there's a thumbnail and a title on the video. Right. Anyways, we watched Tourist Thirst Trap. Thirst Trap? Yeah. No. Just kidding. Tourist Trap. Tourist Trap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking of like. All of the terms that we're going through when we were saying snatched last episode, and that's like a big term. Snatched? Yeah, like I look snatched right now. I don't know. I I don't know exactly what it means, yeah. but I hear all of the Gen Zers saying it. <laughs> okay, so, so you're showing our age here. <laughs> <laughs> why would we? Why were we saying snatched yesterday? We were saying because body snatchers. So we were saying he was snatched. So snatched means I knew this is what it means, but I didn't want to like be wrong. Amazingly good, very attractive, flawlessly styled. Her videos will get you looking snatched. What? Yeah. You didn't know that? No. And then today we see tourist trap and all I can think is thirst trap. Okay. um, Um, So no, actually the one that I was thinking of was yeah the next generation which is texas chainsaw four i think three or four i don't know my phone just froze up so i can't even look it up um (laughs) if you've updated to ios 16 when is the up do we get an update yeah and it's just it's laggy as hell it's terrible on this phone there's a fucking here i can show you there there's a texas chainsaw from yeah i see okay is it a cover I don't know, man. I just know that it looks like it. So that's why I picked this movie, because it looked like Texas Chainsaw. It actually has decent reviews, both because Paramount, or I'm sorry, Peacock shows the Rotten Tomatoes percentage. Which is cool. Which is really cool, and it has like a higher um, percentage than some of the other ones that we were looking at initially. So I was like, fuck it. It's an hour and a half movie. Let's watch this. How bad can it be? Yeah. Um, well. <laughs> it started off really strong. Like, it, it especially did, compared to our previous watch. Well, I would even argue, um, like, com- to the last three or four. They start off so slow, yeah. and they take so much time to build up, where this one's just, like... That's why you can tell... Ten minutes in, this guy's already getting killed. Yeah, we we have a little bit more energy. That's why we're all kind of all over the place on this one. But, yeah, I, I really... I really liked that, too, because I didn't know what to expect going into it. I'm like, all right, tourist trap... Obviously, the setup 
for from the title, I didn't even read the synopsis. From the title, it just it's self explanatory, right? And then the intro of the movie, you're like, oh shit! So these guys, yeah, he's got a flat tire. They're going to a gas station to try to figure it out. There for other friends show up, and he walks into the gas station and or tourist trap that what we know yeah. of, and immediately gets obliterated by an unseen force. Right. So. Isn't the gas station a big thing in Texas Chainsaw, too? Yeah. Okay. Because the, the gas station kind of points, or the gas station attendee always points, like, to the big bad, I guess. Which is... 74 is okay, the original yeah, that's Chainsaw. What I, was, that's what I know I that, because it's... Up. I mean, Leatherface is my favorite. We know, we, you know, we, we know that. We did. I think we did Texas Chainsaw on the first Halloween. I think so, yeah. Anyways... Uh, As and, I'm oh, wearing you got the my shirt on. Texas Chainsaw shirt. Yeah. Uh, Leatherface is my favorite uh, horror icon, so I know 74. The rest of them get a little crazy because they are a little crazy. Yeah. But that's that's it. But Oh, we watched, we talked about the new Texas Chainsaw. We did that individually. Too. Yeah, that yeah, wasn't on But not Halloween. on Halloween no. extravaganza. That so was, go listen to that one if you're interested in knowing our thoughts on Texas Chainsaw. Yeah, the Netflix bomb. Yeah. But, uh, anyways, so yeah, there was like a lot of comparisons. What year did this come out? 78. Okay. Or 79, sorry. So a couple years after the OG Texas Chainsaw, which is seriously yeah. where I got like... Major vibes. Right? Absolutely, because we come to find out the unseen force that attacks Woody in the first uh, scene. Which, um, first of all, great practical effects. A lot, yes. of, a lot of cool stuff going on. Which in is, here. which is what I really enjoy about watching older movies. I don't know if I said this on our last. Yeah, we talked about that with uh, Invasion. Yeah, for sure. But I do enjoy because it, it's just there's so much CGI nowadays in new horror movies. Yeah, it kind of that it's takes just it away. like all right, like yeah. Did that uh, really need to, like there's so many things that don't need to be CGI that are yeah whereas like they didn't have the option for CGI so they had to do everything yeah practical. and in the things that were attacking Woody in this uh, like closet room whatever it may be uh, were like dummy heads and um, there was a chair that was vibrating and he picked up a pipe on the ground to try to escape from the room um, and then there's a like a cabinet that has a like a paint cabinet or a tool cabinet that has that, a bunch of stuff in it. Yeah, like a bunch of bottles. And they were chucking those things at him. So yeah. you know, whoever was throwing those blowing blowing up these glass bottles on the wall was doing pretty good because a couple of them got real close and he was getting covered mm -hmm. in well, you know, whatever it was. Which at first I thought it was like animatronic. You know, I thought like everything was being like forced. Or like, you know, like mechanical, I guess. Mm -hmm. Like when the head popped out of the closet and was laughing, like it looked very mechanical. Yeah, and I think you know? that's because we as humans in 2022 can recognize what, a, you know, what animatronics look like. Yeah. But, you know, in the storyline and of itself, it's someone controlling them with their mind, which is a very interesting plot point that doesn't get explained at yeah. all. No. It's just which in it, the movie. Yeah, which I wish they would have touched on that a little bit. Like, I have powers. Except there was one. There was only one point where he moved the key out of the way, and he goes, pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, anyways, that's the first opening scene. The, the group of friends that uh, went to go look for Woody stumbles across the same exact place uh, called the Oasis, right? The Lost, the Lost Oasis. Oasis. Oh. And there's like a swimming um, hole there. And then this uh, creepy old man shows up and watches three naked women swim. By the way, for the record, this movie is rated PG. It's a 79, 78, 79 movie rated PG, 79. which means they can... Uh, which is wild. They well, can get we, away with a little bit more than what they we can We turned it on, and you were like, PG. And I was like, oh, boy. And I was like, <laughs> we might, we should just turn around now. I'm glad we did it. Yeah, me too. Um, But there is one of the women in this movie oh, is yeah. Midge Pinciotti. From our favorite. From that 70s show. The uh, the hot redhead's mom. Yeah, so her real name is... I don't remember what her real name is. Are you looking at uh, Tanya Roberts. Oh, yeah. She just passed, right? Yeah, she passed away last year in Rest January. Rest in peace. Um, she's a... She's an A plus in this movie. She looks good. Yeah. So we started watching, and I'm always on the lookout for yeah, like, people I recognize. Yeah, for sure. And I saw her, and I was like, that's got to be her. And then... I always second guess myself because I'm like, watch it not be her. Yeah. And it was. And it was. it's crazy because the first time I saw her was 20 years later in that 70s show. She And she looks completely different. Yeah. But I could tell based on like her mannerisms. Oh, yeah. And her voice. And like she's got bright blue eyes. So I just knew it was her. Yeah. I want to know how her top stayed on this entire movie. 
it, it, she she has the Jennifer Aniston uh, issue on here where it's her, her nips are shooting out. Oh, I didn't really see that. Oh yeah, they're shooting out like ten feet, and I think they're the only You're, things you'll notice that though. You're like nipples. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, but she was good in this movie. I think that yeah. her character should have been the one that was the at the end, girl. the final girl, because mm-hmm. uh, there's always a final girl. Everyone knows that in horror films. When there's a group of people, there's always the final yeah, girl. Yeah, but I feel like the blonde always ends up being the final girl. Of course girl. it does. But this, the, I hate it. Uh, the blonde, she should have been the final girl, yeah. especially because she fought, whereas Molly was like very like submissive and yeah. was like let's stay here he told us to stay here let's not go anywhere let's not do anything and then when he drowned or put her under the water she didn't even like struggle yeah we're jumping all over the place yeah. before you get, <laughs> we get anyway to the, well i was just gonna say just so, for the setup of it all is you know they get to this um tourist trap after the creepy old man was like don't stay in there after dark there's snakes and uh, he explains that his brother is the only one that lives in the house. Or, well, first he says it's just clay people or wax people, his wax figures that live in this house. And he's stuck in this little museum that he has. And then come to find out his brother lives in the house as well. And this is where like the Texas Chainsaw-esque stuff starts coming in because the brother wears a mask. Um, we, get the, we get the hint that he's disfigured. Yeah. Um, but he's the one who's like kidnapping people and then turning them into wax people. Uh, House of Wax kind of vibe, which right. I don't know. You had pointed out, actually, speaking of this, that there is a, was it the mystery of the House of Wax or the mystery at the House of Wax? Something like that from oh, 1933. Gosh. Keep talking. And, and, you, and you wanted to know that if if that was what House of Wax was based off of. But I think that there's an original House of Wax. But it was from 1933. Yeah. But I, I don't think that that, and maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think that that was the original, like, House of Wax idea where they, you know, pour wax on people. So all of the wax figures in this house or museum are real people. But in this movie, Tourist Trap, there um, is people that were turned into mannequins. The mystery of the wax museum. Okay. Where it's is, the disappearance of people and corpses leads a reporter to a wax museum and a sinister sculptor. Oh, came so... Came out in 1933. Yeah, 33, yeah. So I'm wondering if that is what House of Wax kind of took their their uh, premise from, or if it was supposed to be a remake of this or whatever, you know? And I So regardless, that movie is 33, this is 79. I mean, there's clear inspiration from that as well because he was turning people into mannequins in this movie... Yeah, which, it's weird. Was he controlling their eyes? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he was controlling. Yeah, so there's like a couple of scenes where like people are walking through a room or or the house or whatever it may be, and the mannequins all, their eyes all start shifting. And it's because he knows that they're in there, you know. And this brother always wears a mask. And we get uh, kind of a glimpse at another person that they kidnapped that wasn't with, which I guess her role wasn't that big of a deal considering the fact that she was just picked up off the road or off the highway or whatever and she was just locked in the basement and was in line to become a mannequin. It it is I do like that concept though. But I mean they gave her a name in the credits and everything but we never heard anything about her. She's Which is just, fine. I I like that though because okay. it's like in horror movies like usually the only people that are relevant yeah. are the people like the people Main that story. you started off with yeah. you know it never shows like you're not the only ones you okay. know and that's fine i, I, I don't disagree I with the that argument. okay know. well good i'm glad you liked it. it i mean for me it didn't make much sense but if it does in the overarching story then cool and i'm down so. with it because it shows that it's not just like a one and done thing or sure. like a once in a while thing it's frequent and that's kind of where the the story starts to unravel a little bit more and it doesn't get bad right it just kind of gets a little bit more messy because Choppy. yeah because there's like these portions where um you know we're learning about the brother and he like you mentioned earlier says like oh i have superpowers you know my brother doesn't like when i have superpowers or use my superpowers but i am and he also doesn't like when i show his face or show my face which is why i gotta wear this mannequin mask because right. i'm ha- i'm more handsome than he is he's kind of got like this split personality going on because later on we find out after everyone else is you know pretty much dead and gone besides the last dude um, and it, what's her name? Molly is the, la- yeah. the last gal. Um, gets chased by the brother out into the woods. 
and then loses him. And then a couple minutes later, the old man pulls up in his truck and she explains to him, I was chased by some dude out in the, you know, some guy who's wearing a mask out in the woods. And he's like, oh, my God, that's my brother. We got to go and, and try to lure him into the museum. I'm going to go turn the radio on. And then he goes inside and gives her the shotgun that he carries around. And he, you know, she, he goes, hey, if anyone comes up here, just point this at them. They'll run off, you know, just point it and shoot. So right. there was kind of this weird setup for this. I had a feeling that. It was. Once we started getting to this portion, I was like, oh boy, okay, there's yeah. no brother. Um, because magically, the brother shows up from behind the truck. She shoots him twice, and I was literally just about to say, how the fuck is he standing if he's getting shot point blank with a double barrel shotgun? And it's because they were blanks. And then he gets whacked in the face. She was smart and whacks him in the face with the butt of the shotgun. Right. Or the stock of the shotgun. And breaks his mask. And we reveal that there it wasn't the brother. It was the old man the entire time. Kind of a Scooby-Doo vibe there, actually. Right. <laughs> the the remo- removal of the mask, <laughs> you know. And then, uh, then it gets really, really weird. That's the downfall of the entire movie. Yeah. That was like the climax for me. Well, and they never... So... I was I was thinking that he she should have stayed in the car when he went inside and like yeah. taken his truck, but I think he took the keys. I'm not sure. I wasn't paying that much attention to no. like that fine detail. But you're right. I mean, you'd think that you'd be if you're trying to escape, you would just get the fuck out of there. Right. <laughs> Don't worry about it at all. So what? He takes her back to the house, right? And ties her up. Yep. At this point, I think Midge is still alive. Um. Yes, she is. And then she they, was in the basement. Yeah. So her and her husband escape. They both go opposite ways. Yep. We we never see the husband after that for a while. Yeah, because it follows. She it follows he follows her. her she yeah. goes into the wax museum and starts getting shot at by the wax figures of Davy. What is it? Is there Davy Crockett there? Uh, yeah, Davy yeah, Crockett. There's an and, Indian. And uh, um, what's it called? General Mustard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what it looks and like the, to like me from he, my clue. The guy's controlling them to make them shoot her. Yeah. Eventually she gets the, an he, axe thrown at her. I would her. say he takes the like the tomahawk Indian, or his tomahawk rather, and, and throws it at, at her. And I think that was pretty cool. Not only was that cool, it was one of the few scenes that was like, whoa, Right. In a PG movie? You weren't expecting Whoa. that. Yeah, and she gets axed in the back of the head, which is pretty nice. Yeah. And then uh, after that, so she's dead, and he goes back to... The house. The house with uh, the blonde chick, the final girl. Right, and she's tied up. And she's, like, hallucinating or something because, like, they're, they were coming alive. Yeah. And, you know, wiping her head because she was, like, wrapped up in all these blankets, and she was sweating and giving her water. And then she finally, like, he has, like, a mental breakdown and is like, you remind me of my wife. And he's, like, kissing on her and shit. And yeah. He's like, please oh. tell me you love me. And then she's like, just let me go. I'm not going to say anything. So he releases her and they go downstairs. And then what's the final guy, the husband? Jerry. Jerry comes back. And then uh, she sneaks over to him and they're, they're like, standing in the corner. And he's, she's just like, kill him, kill him, Jerry, because she knows he was crazy. And he starts laughing, and then there's like this awkward angle cut to yeah. like show that Jerry's actually wax, but then it goes back to him not being wax. <laughs> right. That and that was so strange to me. I get it. It's like it was made in the '70s, so it's really hard to make something look like some wax figure look exactly like the person. Yeah. Right. But it was just that scene was just a mess. It I mean, it was cool. It was, was interesting that it was like. It's not actually Jerry. He's dead. Ah. Yeah, because he breaks his arm off and then yeah. like pops his head off. Yeah, and then his head is like three times smaller than what it actually is. Yeah, it was really, really strange. Uh, and then the final girl, what's her name, Molly? Mm-hmm. Uh, takes an axe as he's dancing with all of the mannequins that are now coming alive. And your favorite thing, because you were laughing the entire time. The mannequins have these like detachable jaws. <laughs> yeah. And, and I guess we're not on video, you can't see it, but there is um 
imagine what's that dummy from Goosebumps? You know what I'm talking about? Oh yeah, that crazy dummy from Goosebumps. Uh, for those who are in our generation, it hit the entire bottom half of this face just like detaches well and it, the funny thing is is it doesn't look bad no it looks good yeah uh, it's like it's not like hell. humpty dumpty where oh, like yeah. when his face opens up it's a completely different face it's literally yeah. uh, like go it, like it works out perfectly when their mouth opens it was um tastefully done <laughs> yeah. comical but also creepy mannequins are kind of creepy you know have you seen silent hill Oh, a long time ago. There's scenes in Silent Hill where the mannequins like slowly like come to life and like yeah. rotate, but it's only when you're not looking at them. Well, it's like the um, Weeping Angels in Doctor Strange. The Weeping Angels. Yeah. They're like all covered in like um, sheets or whatever, white sheets. And then like some of that, they'll come to life. It's creepy. In Doctor Strange? Not Doctor Strange. Doctor Who. Sorry. Oh, I was like, what the hell are you talking about? I've never watched Doctor Who. Oh, I haven't either. I just knew because I went through a haunted house and they had that and I was talking to my dad about it and he oh. was like, the Weeping Angels? Oh, okay. Your and dad's so, a fucking nerd. Yeah. Um, anyway, sorry. Anyways, Doctor Who. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that he, he's dancing with his dead wife who's now alive because she's a mannequin. Yeah, she's like alive and then like she's actually a human at one point and then she's a mannequin again and then she's a human. Yeah. And there was like some cool cuts with that because it's like when he rotated with her one way, she was alive from his point of view. And then when she rotated the other way from uh, Molly's point of view, she was a mannequin. So I kind of liked that. But at the same time, it was getting a little choppy. Yeah. Um, and then he gets an axe in the ch- in the uh, in the neck and dies, and uh, Molly gathers up all of her mannequin friends, <laughs> <laughs> throws them in the jeep, and drives away with them. And that they- is so strange. I'm to wondering me. if there's a second movie, or if there was plans to be a second movie, because this scene this this movie literally ends on a freeze frame of Molly driving Jerry's jeep. With all of her friends made of wax in the back of it. Right. <laughs> and that's it. And she's just like smiling. She's having a great day driving away. <laughs> so it's like, did she become a psycho? What was the situation? Why is she doing this? <laughs> Why wouldn't she call 911? Right. You know? Like, I mean, there were, the phones weren't working. So the only other tourist traps are there's a family comedy called Tourist Trap. Oh. And then there's a short two minute video about a little Jeep. About a little Jeep. Well, usually there is like on um, Letterboxd at the very bottom, it says like related films and there is no related films. No, House of Wax. Well, it says similar films. But yeah, of course, House of Wax and Texas Chainsaw are the number ones. I didn't even see that till right now, but of course they are. We have a guy making mannequins out of real people and wearing a mask with an afro that looks just like Texas Chainsaw. (laughs) I mean, just like it. If you don't, if you don't believe me, go look this up. I mean, it looks identical to Texas Chainsaw, and I'm trying to remember. Still, I know that we're already done with this episode, but I think I swear it was like number two, but it's not. The original one kind of has the same exact mask, but this one just looks like it's way more. I don't know, makeup filled. Like there's a mask that he wears that's supposed to resemble a little kid. And it ended up, it, to me, it looks like it's supposed to be like a little Asian doll. You know what I'm talking about? What are the, not a Russian doll, but the little, yeah, there's like Asian porcelain dolls. Yeah, I don't know what you know? they're called. Yeah. Anyways, that's what it kind of looks like to me. But they say in the movie specifically that it's supposed to be his younger self. And he's like sitting in the, in the living nice. room playing with toys and stuff. Yeah, it, it just looks weird. Strange. It comes off very strange. Um, production value on this thing, not a whole lot to write home about. However, I think the set's. Uh, held together you know for the for what it was and i think that they did a lot with what they had like i don't this was clearly a low budget film yeah but it doesn't look low budget besides like two or three scenes with molly it gets really really grainy yeah when she's back in the 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 museum uh, museum and then there's that little sunburst like in the bottom of the screen that stays there for like five or six scenes like it was on the film oh, itself yeah. so it's there's like this smudge burned portion like circle in in the actual film <laughs> so that's kind of funny but 
the only we you mentioned this I think yesterday when we were talking about body snatchers, how like background sounds are always really really loud. Yeah, we didn't get a lot of that in this movie. Luckily, besides in the basement, there is this constant yeah. drip yes. of water, and I don't know why because it wasn't like they were like telling us um, that there's wa- like blood or something. You know what I mean? Dripping. It yeah, was, like what is like? Is it because they're in a basement that it has to be damp down there? I think so. Yeah, no. I I, I think that's what they were trying to do, <laughs> and that's it didn't it didn't fly with me. But other than that, I don't think uh, any of the sounds were too like crazy. The music was fine. There was like some pretty interesting ideas in the music. Yeah, it was very um, like what is the word? carnival yeah i was gonna say very carnival point. feeling and i don't i don't feel like it, it was before the 80s synth wave stuff t- took over you know like this is 79 but it wasn't quite john carpenter right you know it wasn't it wasn't very out of t- out of touch it just kind of had like that creepy clown style music vibe to it if you know what i mean yeah but uh tell us how we rate things here um, at and Flick. we rate things two ways um, we rate it based on picking it, meaning that we recommend that you watch it or flicking it, meaning that we watch it so you don't have to. Um, and then we also rate it on a scale of one to 10. So one obviously being the lowest and 10 being the highest. So would you pick or flick this movie? I'm going to pick it. Me too. I'm going to pick it. I think that this movie wasn't something we expected. No. It was definitely, uh, took us, uh, took us off guard for a minute. I think there was a point where we were like, all right. This needs to end. Yeah. We're getting a little bored. But um, with all that being said, I think it was a pretty interesting storyline. Yeah. That clearly borrowed some ideas, but I'd watch it again. Yeah, me too. It'd be a movie that you could sit around and drink a couple beers with your friends. Right. And, and it's just like something it. that you can put on. And yeah. it's like you're not going to miss too much if you look away for a minute. No, no. Everything at the end gets explained to the best of their pretty much, abilities yeah. to besides explain. Besides superpowers. Besides the powers, right. Uh, one out of ten. Oh, Tell me yours. I, I think I'm going to give it a six. Okay. I'm struggling. I'm between. I wish I could do 5.5. 5. <laughs> no halves. <laughs> no halves here. At um, I gave it a six because um, it, it it held together. There, there's there been way worse movies that I think I've given sixes right. that were all over and the like, place. And like I gave Body Snatchers a six yesterday and I flicked it. So. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I'll well, give it a six. Okay. Yeah. There, there it is. A six. Hour and a half movie that was clearly not like, I don't, to me, it seems like it's probably kind of a cult classic where there's clearly some following of it because a lot of people that I follow on Letterboxd rated this movie. Like there's like full fledged reviews written about oh, really? about it. Yeah. On like a majority of, and I don't follow that many people. So it was Luke saw it as well. He gave it a four. Luke gave it a four. Mm-hmm. Shame on him. It was better than a four. <laughs> Way better than a four. Uh, we are, well, now we'll be in the single digits. This is, what, 21? 21, yes. Yeah. So we have 10 left. Well, this is the t- our 10th left? Or mm-hmm. we have 10 after more? This, after this, we have 10 more. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Well, there's 31 days. Yikes. Yeah, but we still... Like, no, I know, that's what I'm saying. There's 31 days. Right. So my math is still <laughs> off, as it is in every episode. Regardless, we're approaching single dis- dig- 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 digits. And if you've listened this far, then we encourage you and beg you at this point to subscribe and follow along with the Halloween extravaganza. Share us with your friends, even if it's just to make fun of us, honestly. Yeah, we're pretty stupid. Yeah. And we put our foot in our mouths constantly on this show. I listened to uh, our Candyman episode again, and it is a yikeser. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, we're, no. We're, I put a big apology, like, or not an apology, but a disclaimer of what we were talking about because we come off a little bit arrogant, I think, in it, but. Oh, no. It's our it's our opinion. I mean, it's just how it is. I but, know, but I don't want to get canceled. Canceled with 125 subscribers? People aren't going to listen that bad. <laughs> I haven't even been. We're not even famous yet. Yeah. We're going <laughs> to cancel before we're famous. Anyways, and we also miss out on a lot of things. There's, you know, we don't give credit where credit's due on some stuff, and we jump all over the place. Or we completely then... forget to mention big plots in movies. Oh, yeah. Like the second house. Yeah. Yeah, we always forget that. <laughs> and if you know what we're talking about, go check out the Black Phone episode that we did earlier this month. Anyways, we're doing 31 days 
Vice versa. 31 movies for 31 days in October. The Halloween extravaganza three. We're going to complete it. It's going to happen. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. All right. Thanks for listening. Bye.